Hello, hello, dear friends. Um, so, I never stop. Always up to something, building something. So, this is what I'm, what I'm, what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna show you how do I build my frames in a non-traditional way. I will go step by step. So, I will be rebuilding this copter. It became only a, an ugly, an ugly testing rig. We'll be using same uh, 12 mil uh, 3K weave uh, carbon carbon booms. And I will be doing everything. Everything as I like recently doing is the using a uh, using a, a needed fishing line tie everything together, like I did on like I did on this like I did on on this mini quad. As you can see, there's not a single screw not a single screw was used. So uh, what goes to the frame itself? Uh, the this is the H frame, and it's not as solid as I thought it would be actually because because that's the that's the long that's the longest part and you can see by the plan i made i made it into a little bit like a semi age because that that bit that bit is gonna be shorter than this bit and also wider so the shorter the boom the stronger the stronger it is so uh, this copter is 800 grams shark all a flying weight with, with all the with all the fpv gear osd osd with gps and and so on so uh the naked frame the naked frame is a hundred grams exactly so uh the next the next frame that i'm gonna that i'm gonna be building and showing us uh hopefully is gonna be roughly the same because instead of a carbon fiber we'll be using fiberglass i just got them got them got them pre-cut already while i'm waiting on my on my carbon booms from from china where else you're gonna get the stuff so more or less here's the layout gonna be uh, i have i have this ready also a camera cut ready uh, more or less the layout will be the same as as on the other copter right so let's go get the booms start cutting the booms and shaping the booms onto my drawing let's move on a frame so when i got my plan i got my plan done start cutting the carbon uh carbon tubes uh by angle and basically just me sanding block just using uh shaping them uh by angle to make sure they fit nice and snugly and before I glue them i placed uh place some bit of a pvc not to glue not to glue on the plan now because i'll be using these more amounts for for my uh, hextronic 1300 kv motors uh, i left a few mils out so i'll check by the plan when the frame is done later on and i will trim it to exact uh, exact dimensions right get the other one done and after that i will reinforce here a bit more and i will explain you why shortly okay i got these two angles done as you can see by the plan just Cut the bit, stuck it on the glue. We all good. So that was that was the easy part. Now it's gonna be the hard part. Uh, as you can see, I shaped this one. Just made myself made myself a special tool. This uh, the diameter is slightly less than 12 mil because I'll be using a 12 mil boom. Just basically basically got it got on the table and sanded it off to fit in there. So looking by the plan make sure it fits nicely and not and not and not and not wobbling see if you can see it in here the tighter the fit the stronger it is because the tight fit and less glue will always be stronger than a bloody loose fit and a bunch of glue so when i got one part done in here the fits now there's a the trickiest bit is to get the right angle for this for this uh for this to fit so if i will be going if i will be going just like this sanding i will definitely lose the turn i will definitely lose the turn in here so what i'm doing what i'm doing when i got my this angle this angle done i'm putting another tube just to just to get it just to get it flat to make sure when i sand parallel to the table i don't lose I don't lose the I don't lose the angle before my everything is gonna be flat nice and tight right let's get these two sanded and we'll stick it on the glue just compress that one 
can press that one in and sand it rough roughly to the table parallel to the table yes it is tricky here Time to glue things on, so as long as I'll be using these custom ESCs that they fit rightly in the 12 mil boom, which is a which is a 10 mil and 10 mil in inside diameter. I had to pre-drill the holes for my for my wiring. Okay, so let's get this thing glued on. Right, so everything is spot on on the plan. I have my D's marked. Uh, this is my right and front, and my uh, and my left and front. Just double checking everything nice and snugly. Right, so I got things glued on, and now I know that this is all flat this one is flat they flat these ones are flat and i have just the right just the right angle everything is it is everything it is by the plan by the measurement so this way i have everything flat so i leave it out dry for a moment go grab myself some beer and then later on we're gonna glue these things on time to glue the plates on uh, before gluing, I tacked a few bits of the with the CA glue here. It's still it's still all all brittle. If I just if I just push it, it's just gonna crack. So before gluing, I just sanded this one flat just to just to have it flat. <laughs> okay. Now before I glue this one on, I want to explain you why why did I do it this way? Like it's with every single copter is just. Uh, after a few beers and a few brainstorming sessions in the toilet I have a turning copter flying 3D in my head already so I have I have everything planned already so here's my uh, between the sandwiching here between the booms my Remzibio SD gonna be on on top on there my camera my camera with the, with the VTX gonna be on gonna be on in here and at the back at the back as well this will house in between the sandwich the my my rx with the sander style antenna the battery will be on top so we'll get to that point later right i have this one pinned down let's double check only a small bit of glue is needed in here as it's gonna and it's gonna be only as i say tacked in and then later on I will get some more glue at the joints. This way fits better. It's still well uh, handcrafting manually. There's still tiny bit off there, tiny bit off there. That's why I'm that's why I'm putting everything on the on the plan. Cause if you lose some somewhere in the middle, like half a mil or even a mil, like there's no big deal as long as long as your motor to motor geometry is spot on so get that one glued on okay because i'll be following to make sure it meets in here on the top because there's gonna be tiny little plates sunk in uh, because when you mount in the camera a uh, single single fiber glass single fiber glass does vibrate uh, it's the it's a small vibration small vibration the resonance so that will be that will be gathered together for, for the no movement at all right so I have these glued on um, there's my top so I will have I will have this one for the for the NASA 32 mounting in here but I will glue this one on later when I will tie when I will tie these up because it will be just 
just a little bit easier to get uh, to get access there. The next step, the next step, what I'm doing when these are when these are glued on, when these are glued on, there's gonna be a bit of a a bit of a long process. So I'm just getting more bead of a glue around in here. Just a thick bit of a the thick thick bead of a glue, and then do all the sides. Let it dry. Flip it around. Let it dry. Turn it the other way. Put the bead on. Let it dry, and so on till every single joint is is covered with some extra CA. As you can see, I tied up in here already a few bits and pieces. Now the, these ones are just the easy part. Just tie it up and and that's it but all what you have to tread through the inside through the holes that's the most messiest part in there okay so i will do another one i will do another one to show what i'm going to there's a that's the thing that i'm using it's a nine kilos braid echo fiber whatever blah blah fishing knitted line it's much it's much stronger because let me show you when i was using i was using carbon tread once you're soaking in with the ca it becomes brittle literally for some reason wasn't holding on wasn't holding on as much as I thought it would be okay right so I got a piece of string piece of that bloody line cut up a little bit so we'll go from here not to not to hold it not to hold the line while i'm while i'm winding all this i'm just gluing on a bit one one end okay right so let's start the messing that's the most that's the most the most time consuming part of this type of a build holding down holding down with my fingers make sure it doesn't it doesn't slip and it doesn't lose and as i'm winding i'm always checking make sure it's tight tight and also i'm counting counting the turns to have all of them all of them the same amount and as I'm winding I'm constantly constantly uh, squishing squishing the line squishing the line together the tighter the tighter the turns with each other the stronger it's gonna be I'm on my last tread now just still holding on with your finger so before I tack it tack it with the glue I'm just keep compressing in a bit further right so I got these all nice and tight and before I, before I go any further I'm just spreading them out evenly compressing them even more tighter as they are the tighter the fit the stronger it is so there's another choice where they want to wrap it anyhow and compromise the strength of this part or you want to mess around and wrap it as tight as you can no all this bloody tying up took me something like 25 minutes or something a lot of time consuming now je super glue i got these in a pound shop or two euro shop whatever we call it but it appears to be a thin glue which is very good because if I'll be using a if I'll be using a thick glue, it might not soak straight through like up to the very boom up to the very bottom because it's wrapped up in tight. So the tin glue tin uh, tin CA soaks in soaks in very very well. So what I'm doing, I'm putting on a generous amount of that glue. Make sure make sure it soaks in very good before before it starts setting. Now it's soaked in as much as it's soaked in. I will wipe the axis off now. Carefully with the clod because if I'll be I'll be too late with this clod, it's just gonna 
is just gonna stick and it will look like shit. Oh well, give me a second. I'll be back in a minute. Right, so, kids are sorted. Back to bed, we came back to our brilliant stuff. So legalize this on an airplane on a 10 hour flight. Make my life easier. Okay, uh, I stuck this one on as long as I finished all these winding so my bloody wire won't be, the line won't be in the way. As you can see, I rounded here a bit more because as I said, like this, this part, this part is the weakest part from my previous, from a previous test. So uh, what's left to do next, I will get in in there a little bit of uh, epoxy resin with the uh, micro balloons just to stiffen more a bit that bit uh, finish these bits uh, trim the edges and we put on the weighing scale as a finish frame and we're done see if you can see the details that is as close as I can get with this camera so all thing all things nice and tied up I got uh, sung these one in on the CA glue and it's much stiffer than the other frame that there was and on top of that is a 20 grams lighter okay we have here 89 89 grams now the other frame was the other frame was with the uh, with the motor mount so I'm not sure does these motor mounts count as the motors with the motors or something but with them one it's a hundred and thirty one grams which is which is a little bit these a little bit on the heavy side I'll just I'll just bloody shape them and around right so we'll go get the rest of a copter finish and then we'll do another video about this one copter okay cheers till next time